This is me in a rice field pretending to care about poverty alleviation in China. Look at the rice fields down here. It's really cool. As you can imagine, this is somewhat of a problem because GD Today invited me on this trip and expected me to make an epic video that will get tons of views and help spread the party line about pulling 770 million people out of poverty. But here's the deal. You don't care about poverty alleviation. I don't really care about it. Nobody really cares about it. But since you're here, I do want to talk about something that I do find really interesting, and that is propaganda. There are two forms of propaganda, bad propaganda and everything else. China is bad at propaganda, and I know because I have first-hand experience working for a Chinese media company. Since I have a little experience in this area, let's break it down. There are three things that make Chinese propaganda really bad, and let's start with the first one, which is the biggest problem in my opinion. One of the fathers of propaganda, and a guy you shouldn't actually quote, said, all propaganda has to be popular and has to accommodate itself to the comprehension of the least intelligent of those whom it seeks to reach. There are two key points in this quote, and the first one is it has to be popular. It has to be popular. Did you watch the new Top Gun movie? Was it popular? Was it propaganda? Yes and yes. Of course it is propaganda. And finally, new rule, someone has to tell me why the same film critics who find every movie somehow lacking in woke credentials are all in on Top Gun Maverick, a two-hour propaganda ad for defense contractors, militaristic jingoism, and bombing foreigners. But it's not bad propaganda, which is why millions of people watched it and think it's just a good movie. But there is a clear message about American military might, which brings us back to China. When was the last time you watched a popular Chinese movie or video that was pro-China and produced by the state? The biggest issue Chinese media companies face is creating content that is popular or even interesting. Okay, that is kind of interesting, but for all the wrong reasons. Where is the Tucker Carlson of China? The second key point in this quote is about comprehension. What does it even mean to lift 770 million people out of poverty? That number makes no sense and humans can't comprehend such large numbers. There's a theory in neuroscience called the law of large numbers, which basically states the larger the number, the harder it is for us to comprehend. There are ways to overcome this problem, but again, we really can't comprehend it. Some techniques include breaking big numbers into smaller groups, like saying China has lifted two Americas out of poverty in the last 40 years, but even that seems off. As you can see, this is a big problem for Chinese media companies. They end up focusing on topics that aren't popular and aren't easy to comprehend, making their efforts pointless. The next issue that many media companies face here is the limitation on creativity and fear. I won't say Chinese people aren't creative, because that is far from the truth. But when it comes to Chinese media, well, let's just say, don't be the nail that sticks out. One of my favorite quotes is from another guy that I actually can quote, Upton Sinclair, and he said, It is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon him not understanding it. The craziest part of all this nonsense is people that work for Chinese media companies understand they're producing they know it is bad, but because their jobs depend on producing specific types of content, they do it. They all want to produce interesting content or viral videos, but they are too afraid to take any risks. It is much easier to have foreign influencers dance with minority groups in a tourist attraction than to take any real risks by actually interviewing people from that minority. Our tour guide said there was around 2.5 million Yao people living in China, and we were taken to just one little tourist attraction which probably employs a few hundred Yao people. As influencers, we are supposed to show how China is improving their lives, but this is impossible because we weren't shown how a typical Yao person is living. Chinese media companies could be far more creative and produce better content if they weren't scared to have an opinion. Content that is stale or lacking an opinion makes it hard for the audience to feel anything. If you don't have some kind of emotional drive in your content or an opinion, people are going to find it boring. The worst part about it all is if the stories were told right, they could have a real impact. China has improved the lives of many people by reducing poverty. 
According to reports, the per capita disposable income of the rural poor increased from around 6,000 RMB in 2013 to over 12,500 RMB in 2020. That is around 150 US dollars a month, or around $5 a day, which isn't much to live off, but it has doubled in the last seven years. I'm sure there are thousands of stories about families and communities that have changed a lot because of this increase in income. Hell, they could just avoid talking about minority stories altogether because, you know, it might be in their best interest. And they could just focus on stories like Shenzhen itself. 40 years ago, Shenzhen wasn't a massive hub and growth engine for China. Now it is one of the largest and most advanced cities in the world. That story alone is interesting. But because everybody in these companies is too scared to say the wrong thing or policies might change and what they say today might look bad in the future, they end up making very boring stories. So it's kind of like it's better to be plain and boring and stay employed than to be bold and, well, unemployed or worse. <laughs> That joke wouldn't be allowed if I was making this video for a Chinese media company. Which brings us to our next point. What do you call North Korea? North Korea. North Korea. North Korea. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Probably not the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. But if you work for a Chinese media company, you will have to call it by its full and correct name. So what's the problem with this? Language and assimilation are two major problems that Chinese media companies have not rectified in their English content. Language is important if you want to influence people, you have to speak their lingo. It's easy to spot outsiders, and Chinese media screams outsider, and not in a good way. Which brings us back to the whole point of this, poverty alleviation. They use this term that I've never heard anywhere else other than in China, and when you're watching a video, you can almost immediately detect that it's Chinese propaganda because of the words they use, like poverty alleviation, and this makes them outsiders, right? You can immediately understand that you're watching propaganda. You're not watching a normal news program or a normal news um, segment. Using the language, mannerisms, and video packaging of your target audience is super important if you want that group of people to respond favorably. That's my friendly marketing tip for the day. See, my degree is uh, paying off in the end, right? Personally, I would never go to a fish farm or to a rice field or to an exhibition about urban planning. So we just arrived out here at this fish farm and it's part of uh, this area's uh, poverty alleviation efforts. These types of places aren't interesting and if Chinese media companies want to influence overseas audiences, they need to take more risk or at least adopt the format of their target audience. And probably the most important aspect of creating better content and not bad propaganda is rapping. If you made it this far into the video, you've probably learned three things. One, China has lifted 770 million people out of poverty in the last 40 years. Two, GD Today invited me on a trip to film fish farms, rice fields, and other poverty alleviation efforts. And finally, these topics are important to China but media companies don't know how to properly communicate that message to a foreign audience. This is what I call wrapping content and something Chinese media companies haven't learned to do very well. This video is about how bad Chinese propaganda is, but at the same time, if you made it this far, you have learned more about China's poverty alleviation efforts. So give this video a thumbs up if you've learned something today. And also, let me know which Chinese media you actually watch. Do you watch Xi Jitian or Xinhua or something else? And leave a comment below telling me why you watch it or what you watch. And if you're curious to learn more about my time working for a media company here, um, and you wanna know more about the kind of behind the scenes of propaganda, kind of what I was doing as a marketing manager and spending lots of money, um, leave a comment. And if enough people comment and it seems like an interesting topic, I can talk specifically about my job uh, as a marketing manager for a Chinese media company. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And if you're looking for something else to watch, I have made some other things that are not propaganda, uh, but you might like. So click here or there, wherever it pops up, and I will see you over there.